Hi everyone, this is Chetan Nayak. So this is a quick video on the various undocumented sleep obfuscation techniques of Brute Retell. During this video, we will take a look at how this technique is different from the ones of Foliage or Nighthawk's timer technique. We will be using x64 dbg and process hacker to validate our findings. So let's start and take a look at the sleep obfuscation techniques of foliage first in order to ver verify whether the technique is the same. Uh, we will first need to understand this. So I will give a quick high level overview of how foliage works and then the ones of Nighthawk that we have. So uh, to understand it uh, in a high level overview, uh, foliage first creates a new thread in a suspended state as you can see the value here. It takes any instruction pointer, currently whatever has been supplied by uh, idiot over here, uh, sorry, sec idiot over here. And using this instruction pointer, the new thread will be created, which will be shown as its entry point in your uh, process hacker or elsewhere where you take a look at it. So we have a new thread which is created in a suspended state with a fake instruction pointer, your spoofed address. If you scroll down, you'll see that we will create an synchronization event here. And then we will extract the context of this specific thread. Since it's in a suspended state, it hasn't even started. It is just uh, stuck right now. We'll extract its con context and then we'll copy that context, which is basically in one of the code above. And then we will queue some ROB gadgets as an asynchronous procedure call to this specific thread, which means all of whatever gadgets that we create will be queued to uh, the newly created thread. So we will simply go and uh, create ROB gadgets to change our RX region to RW, encrypt the RW region over here. Currently it's using NT device IO control file, or you can use something like system function 032 from ADB API. Uh, NT continue to allow uh, to alert that specific thread and let it continue and a few other ROB gadgets to restore the original functionality, which means Every time your thread is, uh, or your uh, payload is going to go to sleep, it will create a new thread, stack some ROB gadgets onto the new thread, and then the new thread that you have created, that thread will change the RX or RW regions of your uh, existing thread. Since it is waiting on an object, it won't be executing, so it won't crash in that case. But the problem with this specific technique is that the current code that has been uploaded, it only supports a single threaded mechanism because it does not take into consideration that if there are multiple threads and if those threads return while your main thread is sleeping, those threads will return to an RW region, which means uh, they won't be able to execute, which will lead to a crash. That is why it was only uh, workable with Cobalt Strike and uh, for Brute Total, I had to modify a lot uh, into the V0.7 release. The second technique that we have over here is specifically from Nighthawk, or at least what, that's what it has been claimed. So over here, we are simply creating a timer queue, and then we are creating a timer for the timer queue. We are extracting the queued timer threads context. We are simply extracting, copying the context to a new thread, uh, sorry, a new uh, empty structures that we have for context. And then we are sim uh, doing the exact same thing as to what we did over here. Same, uh, changing the registers because the first four registers, RCX, RDX, R8, R9 are basically used for x64 dbg, sorry, for x64 processes and for x86, all of them will simply go to stack. That is one of the reasons why uh, converting this specific technique to x86 might be a little bit of a pain in the ass because you have to uh, properly allocate uh, exactly which uh, specific uh, register uh, with specific stack to modify and how to modify them else it will lead to a crash and i haven't seen any x86 implementation of this as well so i didn't even knew about this technique until um, austin released a blog post on this but yeah never mind however brutal does not use either of these two techniques that we have seen over here so let's see in the first technique we will be creating a new thread which means every time we go to sleep there will be a new thread that will be created in a suspended state and will allocate gadgets to that. In the second technique, we will be uh, calling the API that is create timer queue timer and the create timer queue. Let's see if Brutal behaves in this manner or whether it is different. So the current release that I'm showing you V1.1 
uh, it has an option over here to specify what kind of sorry my bad it has an option to specify what kind of sleep obfuscation technique you want to use the first one is a default one which is a modified version of uh, foliage i normally don't use this technique due to the um, heavy uh, new, every time there's a new thread being created and i'm not really a fan of that the other two techniques are pooling pooling zero and pooling one which is what we will be uh, taking a quick look at in this specific video so i'll simply go and create a new payload and store it into my documents directory let me go back and execute badger here which will uh, extract and execute a shell code let me see if we have any rx regions here you can see there are no rx regions let's take a look at threads and you can see that there is a thread being created and being destroyed every few uh, seconds that's because the sleep is currently set to one and one second means due to foliage technique it will simply go and create a new thread kill a new thread not really opsec safe i would say in this scenario so however as you can see the sleep is set to one let me change some few things in the previous release v1.1 uh, the current uh, the example that we have over here was uh, uh, it did not have an option to auto, uh, to specify which technique to use which means it automatically switched from the first technique to the second to the third and so on randomly at random intervals just to make sure that it is opsec safe but in this release i have added an option for user to uh, exactly specify what kind of uh, sleeping technique it wants to use so currently it's sleep it's uh, the obfuscation technique as zero let me set it to let's say obs sleep one and let me go back and you can see that there is not a single new thread being created over here which is what fully has did let me go back and see if uh, the command still execute you can see we are getting output for all the commands that we have run over here if i go back you can still see there are no threads being created even for sleep one which means this is not fully edge and if i go to the memory section you could see see that the rx region is still hidden you won't see the rx region until unless i uh, specify the sleep to zero now let me uh, yeah before i go ahead let me go to symbols uh, let me search for sorry yeah let me just attach it to the debugger sorry i forgot to attach it to the debugger let me go to symbols and um, kernel 32.dll let me search for uh, create timer and you can see that i have added breakpoints i will uh, disable and enable both of them you can also see that both of them are enabled and you can see that we have not hit the breakpoint we can see the threads are still running no new threads are being created you can also see the rx region which is still hidden there is not a single rx region at all over here let me change sleep obfuscation to let's say sleep obfuscation 2 the third technique of sleep obfuscation and you can see that we are still not hitting the breakpoint if i do a refresh you can see that the rx region still does not exist and if i do let's say a sleep 0 now the rx region will simply start showing up because it's not hiding itself as you can see i'll open it up convert it to let's say sleep 2 sorry not sleep 2 my bad obf sleep 2 uh, yeah i think it is already obf sleep 2 i'll just change it to sleep 1 and you can see that the whole content over here is again changing which means again this is not foliage and this is also not whatever night hawk uses this is a totally different implementation apart from both of these techniques but yeah this was a quick overview of how uh, blue turtle hides itself in memory it does not use any open source techniques apart from the first technique which is a partially modified version of foliage uh, but yes in case if you are not that good in reverse engineering you can always feel free to dm me i can explain things or you can always join my malgrans rights workshop where i will uh, where, I, where i will be explaining how both of these open source techniques work and how detections for them can also be written at the same time So yes that will be all for this video and in case you have any questions you can just feel free to uh, dm me on my discord channel or you can simply attend the workshop in case you don't know how to reverse engineer and see what uh, things are different in that case so cheers guys have a nice day